I mean, there is the stereotypical chemist with, you know, the bad hair and the pocket full of pot, you know, the pens and gesticulating with great passion about his data. We, we all know about that. It's an enduring image, but it's one that just doesn't really reflect reality anymore. Far from being a series of lone mavericks, modern scientists rely heavily on one another for progress. Science is about collaboration, initially with your own students. So I'm educating now the next generation, and there are awfully talented people around me. And all what they need is a little bit of encouragement. They need to learn from me the principles, but they are much smarter than I am. People come from all over the world because they have the same interest. And how many people can actually say that about their profession? Science is now an enormous team effort crossing national and political boundaries. There's a conservative Jew from Brooklyn, a Palestinian refugee from a camp in Lebanon, a Spanish revolutionary, an Italian actor who wanted to solve the molecular basis of femininity. That's the magic of a laboratory. It's an extended and often rather eccentric family of people with varied skills and diverse interests. Getting the most out of life in the lab relies on finding a place to fit in. Many students get the impression that you have to be very good in a whole lot of domains and, uh, if you're going to be a scientist. Math in particular, that really isn't true at all. The fact is, most of science, people don't use much more mathematics than a grocery store clerk. They really don't. There are domains where it's far from that. I mean, use the highest level of math you can find, but, but for most of it, it's not the case. Working in a team where everyone has complementary skills means that labs can tackle much larger and more interesting problems than a lone researcher. It's this hunger for new knowledge that unites scientists bringing them back to their labs day after day. It's the same thing that has always driven research forward. Curiosity, just curiosity. Just by walking into the street, I mean, there are, you can ask yourself endless number of questions. The trees are green, why they are green, why they are not blue. And, you know, the answer to each of them is so awfully complex and so awfully exciting that you must be curious just to understand your very so-called simple environment. For some of us, it's just the challenge of trying to understand things. You know, it's, it's almost uncontrolled. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, well, what is it like? And I, is it like being Einstein or something? I, I think it's a lot more like being Huckleberry Finn. You have adventures, you don't know what the answers are. But if, if it's intriguing, if it's worthwhile, and it's fun, then we do it. Scientific exploration still holds that thrill of discovery, of something new around the corner. It also makes it one of those rare professions where your work can mesh with your own passions. But that does tend to blur the boundaries between when chemists are working and when they aren't. Well, it's not a nine to five job. It's uh, more or less from the time one gets up in the morning to the time one goes to sleep late at night. You get hooked on these questions and you're thinking about it all the time. You think about it in the shower in the morning. You think about it in the middle of the night. You think about it when you're riding your bicycle and, and you, you just keep turning over the possibilities. I mean, I, I solve half my problems, you know, taking a shower or walking down the street or something. You know, you know, and so, so you got to be thinking all the time about, about it, and you got to be interested enough so that you're thinking about it. And, 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 and that's really, then when you go in the laboratory or you sit down, it's, a lot of it's done already. This curiosity is something we're all born with from the first moment we ask the question, why? But that same curiosity can fall by the wayside when confronted with the cryptic patterns of the periodic table or the intricacies of differential equations. Science and math were the first things they encountered in school where there seemed to be only one right answer and you were expected to see how to get the answer by some approved procedure. And if you didn't see this right away, of course, you're likely to be alienated and turn away from it. And the, the sad thing is how different that is than real science. The researcher is very pleased to be confused because that means uh, 
there's something there that probably other people don't understand either. And so, you know, gold in them thar hills in that direction. Unfortunately, there's no getting away from it. Trying to mine the truth out of this confusion is no mean feat. To be a scientist is something like being a musician. I mean a real musician, not just the guy who turns up the knob, you know. Uh, you need to master your instrument. You need to master the literature uh, and music and the culture. And science is much like that. But compared with a musician, the scientist can and prob probably will play 99.9% .9 of the notes wrong, then get one right. But it doesn't matter if you now and then get the right one. For a scientist, there are no boundaries. Uh, one can grow in, a, in, in many different directions. And I've just found that those opportunities of teaching, of doing research, of creating new uh, materials, of having patents, of starting companies, uh, what an interesting life.